Yo guys, what is up? In this video, we are finally finishing our website. We are just a couple minutes away from rocking that awesome blog website. So let's roll that intro. So my promise to you guys is that this is gonna be the shortest of all three videos. We're just gonna be adding a couple features to our site, but it shouldn't take that long. Like I mentioned in the last video, I wanna try and add the functionality functionality. Basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to add the ability to comment on posts. We're going to fix everything that's going on in this footer so that we can link to our actual Instagram feed and other social profiles. And then we're going to have a link to go back to our homepage because that is pretty important when you're navigating the site. So first let's add those comments. You actually can do this with Expression Engine and there's nothing wrong with doing that. You can figure out how to do that on your own, but I'm gonna be using a third party app called Discuss. This is actually free if you are okay with it showing the ads, but it's really easy to set up and I'm actually gonna set up an account with you guys. So what we're gonna do is head over to discuss.com and select get started and you can just sign in with one of your social accounts and that'll probably be the quickest way to do this or you can just create an account manually. And what we're gonna select is I wanna install Discuss on my site. And you can throw in your website name. I'm just gonna call this a blog circle. You can choose the category for whatever it is. I guess I'll be tech and create site. And like I said, we're just gonna use the free ads version. So we're just gonna select subscribe now. And we're gonna scroll to the bottom and select I don't see my platform because we're just using the hard code for this. And what we're gonna do is just copy all of the text in this first box and go inside our section tag here in our post.html and just paste this in. Then we're gonna copy the second bit of code and go to the bottom right before our embed code and paste that script in there. So now if we refresh our blog post here, you'll actually see that we have a section to comment on this post. And so the reason I'm using this third party plugin is just because it looks a lot cleaner. All of the styling is already done. It works with people's social accounts and it's so easy to set up. You can use another third party plugin or you can use Expression Engine, but this is the version that I'm gonna be using for now. Next, we're gonna check out this footer. This is gonna be found inside of our footer.html. Now, if you're using something like MailChimp with some automation, you can set up a subscribe form here so that you can set up an RSS feed and anytime you post, people get an email. I'm not gonna go through that in this video and I'm just gonna set this as a simple contact form. But if you wanna learn how to do that, I'll put a couple links in the description. So I'm gonna replace subscribe with contact me and then I'm gonna surround the subscribe button with a link and I'm gonna type open caret a, href equals open quote and we're gonna type mail to colon and then whatever your email address is and then you wanna make sure you close that link and go to the end of the subscribe button and end it with an open caret forward slash a and a close bracket. And since we don't need other people's email addresses, we're just gonna delete this column here because they're already emailing us, we don't need any of that. Next, we're gonna change this input type from submit to button, and then we're gonna change the value from subscribe to whatever you want. I'm just gonna say drop an email. Save that and refresh our blog post. And now if we click that button, it'll create a new email and then the person can contact us that way. Now, if you wanna change any of this text as well, maybe you wanna type some copyright, you can just type alt G and then 2018 copyright. I'm not sure that's the official way to write copyright, but whatever you wanna put here, you can. You can change the text to whatever, or if you wanna comment it out, what you can do is select that row and then hold down command and then forward slash and it'll comment it out. That way it'll be hidden from the footer. Next, in order to get this Instagram feed working, we gotta go into some JavaScript. We're gonna head over into Cyberduck, go into our framework, JavaScript, and then double click on main.js. Now there's tons of stuff in here and it might be a little overwhelming and quite frankly, I don't know much of what's going on, but just to jump to where we need, you'll see that Instagram is in 28. So I'm just gonna do a command F search for 28. So we can jump right there. It's line 1220 if you're scrolling. So there's a couple things we need to do here. First, we need to get our user ID. Now this is different from your Instagram handle. You actually need to find whatever your number is and you can do that by going to this website here, smashballoon.com slash Instagram dash feed. And what you need to do is just enter in your username and then just say four 
and say get Instagram user ID and that'll give you that number that you need and you can copy that and paste it in the user ID. Then what you need to do is get an access token and you'll just go to this website here and select generate access token and authorize it for your account and then you can just copy this number and replace the token with that key. So it's a little complicated, but once you finish adding those two, it'll load all of your pictures. And it's important to note that I do have a couple portrait pictures here and a couple landscape photos. That's why it's not a perfect grid. So if you are uploading to Instagram and you're kind of worried about that, it may be a good idea to just upload square pictures. Now we just need to add a link to get to our homepage. So I'm actually just gonna make use of this bookmark icon here in the header image. So if we can find that bookmark border, it looks like it's this first div up here. So because this uses material icons, we can actually choose from any of the icons on that list. So here's a website that lists out all of those icons and their names. I'm just gonna use this house icon here, which just says home. So all you have to do once you find the icon you want is delete the text here and just type in its name. And then when you refresh, it'll keep that icon there. But all we're gonna do is just create a quick link. So we're gonna surround this I tag in an href and we're gonna say site URL and just close that tag at the end of this I tag. And once that has refreshed, we can then click on that house icon and we're back to our homepage. Now we won't actually be using this share icon here so we can go ahead and delete it. But if you wanna add sharing functionality to each post, I would recommend using a site called Add This. This is a free app and basically you can just copy this code and paste it in, I would paste it in the header. So just inside that file somewhere. And when you refresh the page, you'll see that those social icons are here. You can share to Facebook and Twitter, print it out, whatever you wanna do. And you can customize that widget in your Add This dashboard. But this is just a really quick way to add sharing functionality. And we can go ahead and delete these comments and likes because that's not actually connected to our discuss page. So we can just delete this div right here. And the last thing we wanna focus on is the category because I'm sure you're not just gonna focus on one category. If you are, then you don't need to watch this part of the video, but I'm assuming most of you guys will. So let's focus on how to do that. First, what we need to do is head into our expression engine dashboard, click on developer and go to categories. Now we already have a category group, so we just need to create a couple categories. You can call this whatever you want. I'm gonna have one called tech. I'll create another one called news and another one called food. Obviously these are just placeholders. You can change this to whatever you want. But now if we go back to some of our posts, we can assign these posts to some of these categories. So I'll create one for news and for two, I'll assign that to tech. And for post one, I'm gonna assign that to food. You do have to assign a post to a category for this to work, of course. Just wanna make sure. And now all we have to do is double click this design and we're gonna type an open bracket categories, close bracket, open bracket, category underscore name, and then a new open bracket with a slash and then categories. And that's just gonna bring in whatever category this post is assigned to. Now the last thing we need to do is just set up this sidebar. Now, you really don't need to do this if you're not gonna be setting up multiple pages, but I'm gonna show you how to do this anyway, and also how to link these social icons to your account. So all of that's gonna be found in the sidebar.html. So what you can do is head over there, and then where you see these Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus links, you can replace this hashtag with the link to your profile. So if this was a YouTube link, you could just say HTTPS colon forward slash YouTube dot com slash Mac Square videos. And then you would link to Twitter and Google Plus or whatever you're using there. Now I believe this is using Font Awesome instead of material icons. So if you are trying to use a different social network, just look up Font Awesome icons and you can replace that with that social network. Now for the logo that's gonna show up, I'm actually gonna upload this to our framework folder. So whichever logo you're using, just grab that file, head over to your root folder here, and go into framework. And then you can, and then you can create a new folder called images. So let's create new folder, images. And then you can just drag your logo into that folder. Then what you can do is just link that. So we're gonna say 
open bracket site underscore URL slash framework slash images. And I'm just going to rename this file to logo. That way we can just have logo.png. And now if we refresh our website, you'll see that our logo has now come in. If it's too small for you, you can just change the height. We can change it to something like 50. And you'll see it'll get a little bit bigger. And now if you want to add any links, we're going to be working inside of our unordered list here. So inside of our navigation div, you can just create a new line. And we're going to create a link by creating a new caret, typing a href equals, we'll just put a hashtag for now, and then close that tag slash a. And inside the a, we're going to create a list item, which is just abbreviated with li. And we're going to close that bracket. And then you can type in home and then close that bracket as well. So now you'll see our link is coming in there and then you can just duplicate this as many times as you need. So if you have a home page and about me page, whatever you want to do, you can type that in there. And all your links will show up like that. So right now you can see add this is actually covering our nav, which is obviously not ideal. So we want to head over into our header HTML and we're going to wrap the add this script in a conditional tag. So what that looks like is an open curly bracket. We're going to type in if and then we're going to type in segment underscore two and then type in two equal signs, a single quote, and then write post. And then at the end of the script tag, just write an open curly bracket forward slash if. And basically what that means is if the second segment of our URL equals post, then the add this will show up. Otherwise, it'll be hidden. So right now it's not showing up. But if we go to our post, it will appear because you'll see that our first segment is blog circle and the second is post. So it sees that and then it shows up. Now, if you actually want to link the sidebar navigation to real pages, just head over into Cyberduck and then duplicate a page for whatever page you're making. So if we wanted about me to link to about me, we would replace this hashtag with blog underscore circle slash about underscore me. And once that's uploaded, we can refresh the page. And if we click about me, we'll be taken to the about me page. Obviously, there's nothing there. But if we open up the about me page, we could say, hello world. And when we refresh, you'll see that it shows up. So it's actually linking to the page. There's just nothing there. And so you could pull from the template again. You could duplicate the index HTML file to keep the same layout. There's a ton you can do, but that's how to set up links for your sidebar. So guys, that is it for this video. And that also concludes our mini series. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit that like button for any of these three videos and subscribe for more awesome Mac tutorials and tips. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.